Okay, hey everyone. I minimally prepared for this because of thing, but um, we are so excited to, to announce IPFS Camp 2023 as we talked about. Yay! Um, and we decided on Bangalore, India, November 3rd through 5th. Um, and so super excited about that. But the purpose of this kind of workshop discussion time is to really focus on bringing in more people who are interested in helping us uh, gather content for IPFS thing, IPFS camp and um, help build the organizing team. Um, and so we could do a quick retro of IPFS camp from last year. Uh, we did one briefly, but it'd be just to refresh our recollection of what we thought went well and what we, what didn't go well and what we'd like to have for next year. Yeah, so we thought we could do it. One way of doing this is I have this uh, slide. I'll share it in our general Slack. Uh, we could all use these stickies. I, I haven't shared the link yet. I'll just do it right after. Uh, we could use the stickies to sort of take inputs from everyone um, sitting over here, uh, do the retro, followed by what are our goals and objectives, uh, and then followed by brainstorming uh, what tracks do we want. But this is a way of doing this. If anyone here has a better idea, we are open to that. Otherwise, I'll share the link right away and we can get started. Cool, so um, the box over there links to the recap blog. Uh, if you just want to give yourself a quick refresh on what happened at IPFS camp last time, maybe take a look at that blog. We'll wait for about five, five minutes. minutes. Um, and yeah, you all can just like input Pick one of those stickies and put um, your thoughts, and then we will discuss. Yeah, that. Okay, cool. I will do a quick recap of maybe let's fix it things first and respond to a couple of them that we already know we can. Um, yeah, Lisbon was 14 days. This one's not going to be 14 days. It'll be um, three days of IPFS camp, uh, plus this is not yet announced, but two days of Phil Bangalore, and maybe one more day, but that's about it. <laughs> but this is it, like, seriously. <laughs> um, However, we do expect we do expect that once uh, we start promotions for IPFS camp, um, other events locally might come up as like side events around the same duration. So just FYI, but I, I doubt it will be 14 days this time. So I, I do not doubt that it will not be 14 days this time. <laughs> um, and cool. Um, more hacking time together, more workshops plus bounties. I think they are both like similar, so I'll put them close to each other. Um, more intro to IPFS talks. Yeah, I think uh, that's very relevant given the audience we will have. Um, implementers, builders, but few users represented. Get NFT platforms, okay. Uh, more substantial job fair, longer expo, and better scholars programming, okay. Um, and in the good things, lightning talks track, giving back to the local community, uh, things content. We did some things content, include that and recruit more contributors. 450 people, oh, this time we'll definitely have more people. Uh, Lip P2P track was great, super well attended. And uh, multiple tracks for beginners plus. Okay, cool, beatbox guy, we'll, we'll definitely have some <laughs> equivalent entertainment version for that. Okay, cool. I think this is great. Yeah. And with this in mind, maybe let's think about what are the broad goals and objectives we want to accomplish with IPFS Camp this year. Um, probably keeping in mind the keynote summary we saw yesterday on how can actually IPFS Camp help sort of magnify the outcomes of the action items we decided on yesterday. Um, yeah, uh, let's maybe keep this to three minutes plus two minutes in case people want to expand. So. Uh, 
I think one of the things that we saw at last type of camp was a lot of new people and we had some content for, for new folks, but even that the, a lot of the feedback was that even that was still too, too uh, high of a barrier for them to climb and very, very technical uh, for the level at which they were entering. So I think a really clear path for very new beginner people, maybe even folks who are learning how to code like a, a separate small track for, for that level of people that are getting involved doing their first application or first web app, things like that with IPFS. Yeah, and I, in in very much the same vein. I mean, I think it's sort of like the same brainwave, but that like um, one thing that I often find difficult to explain to people, and I think that reflects on the same thing, is like, what is this whole space? What are the things that you can be doing with it? And so sort of like the 30,000 feet view of, of everything, and maybe this is how you choose your own adventure in this space is, is something that could help onboard people. Um, um. Yeah, I think riffing on that, I, I ended up putting philosophy of IPFS up there. Like, what are we trying to do rather than just another weird system to make a web app with? Uh, <laughs> um, and that maybe links well with the, like, get more nodes running uh, as well. Um, so those, those two could be, could be fitting together. Because uh, ideally, and maybe along with that, I put onboard no new OSS contributors, right? Like, what is the impact be beyond that? But also, and this is really maybe your next talk. Everywhere we do one of these, we should leave behind a thriving uh, IPFS community. Um, I put in a couple of points in there too. Uh, the ones that start with uh, communicate is all me because. I think we seriously need to communicate better and about all the exciting stuff we are doing. Um, one insight, so I, w I was talking to like developers from India, um, sort of preparing like what are their motivations, etc. like trying to understand that. And one insight was that, you know, IPFS was really cool when it started. And now it's just something that the people who n know about it use, use it, like, you know, either through a pinning service or like, but there are not a lot of people engaging with all the new developments that are happening. So we, we need to do like, we need to be able to like communicate everything that's happening uh, better. Um, and sort of similar to expand core protocol contributors is also making sure we get, they know what to contribute to. Uh, so it be the roadmap for all the different um, implementations that we have or the other projects that are being built uh, in the ecosystem. Um, okay, um, uh, is there anything else anyone would like to add to the goals here? I mean, the, the, the one thing I'd note is that it, I find it remarkable just like how aligned <laughs> All of these are they're very much in the same space, so I think that's a pretty good sign. Yeah, I'd, uh, I have a question on this one. Every attendee votes on IE awards. So the Impact Evaluator Awards were a vote that we did for, uh, we did the first round of awards at the last IPFS thing, and then we did the next round at this one, and we had people vote, but we actually had a Given there's a, almost 150 people here, we had about half that number of people actually vote. And I think, and maybe that's just actually a articulation of a higher level goal, which is these events should result in community participation and engagement in what the IPFS ecosystem actually is. And I think the Impact Evaluator Awards are a way for the community to participate in determining its own future and what gets funded, what gets acknowledged, what gets rewarded for being created and that is value. And there's a signal in there about how, how, how like is that, is that set of things 
to be voted on the right set of things. Uh, if there's low participation, then maybe we're not getting the right set of things in there. And so I think there's a that participation in that process is a really good way of measuring the health of the community, showing our the how how much uh, the people that are set putting on these events and setting up those awards are in touch with what community needs are. Do we have the right people participating? So that I've I've just kind of threw that in there as a if we can get everybody who registers to also vote, then we might get a better sense of some of those things. Yeah. And also, I think it's it's an important way of putting our money where our mouth is. Like, I mean, very literally in this case, as like when we say that we want community to drive this thing, it's like, well, here here's a pool of money. You go like drive yeah. where it goes. I think that that's a very important message to try to like get as many people to to notice. Yeah, as possible. Um, I have a like a it's not a problem, but there is a difficulty in actually being able to execute this because not everyone ends up looking at all the projects and, and the question and the emphasis is on all the projects. So even if everyone ends up voting, like how do we make sure that if, if there's like a hundred projects submitted to this, how, why, what's the motivation for people to actually look at them before they vote? I mean, I, I don't think we should expect everyone to look at every project. Uh, but so long as the way in which people get to see projects is reasonably random and they're not all exposed to the same three projects that everyone's going to vote on, mm -hmm. I, th I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. So maybe a good way of like summarizing the goals and objectives, uh, we can club these stickies that are in the similar zone. I'll just like take 30 seconds to do that right now. Okay, so it looks like um, grow the number of new developers in the IPFS ecosystem. That's one goal, the left group of stickies. Grow the, what's a good way of summarizing the second bucket? Philosophy of IPFS deployment production group track and yeah, can someone help me here? I don't know how to summarize this group. The, the oh, second sorry. one. Um, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, the middle one. Like philosophy of IPFS, deployment production, grouper track, and get more nodes running. Like what's a good way of? I mean, I think philosophy goes with communicate, you know, on board, I don't know. I put philosophy in there of like, you're like, this is what you can do. This is uh, what it's about. This is the long-term plan. Uh, every human on the planet can store stuff online effectively for free, effectively forever. And then it's like, that's super exciting. How do I get started? You should run a node. And they're like, okay, I'm running a janky little home node or running IPFS desktop. But, and then it's like, oh, here's how you like run it for real at the library or something is kind of how I was thinking about it. Um, but hmm. why, how, and ouch. <laughs> <laughs> those are great groups. Yeah. Why, why, how, and ouch. Can you note those down as tracks? <laughs> I'm actually going to write that down. I was serious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then the last group is, I think, clear and simplified communication of our, of, of the key takeaways from from IPFS thing actually. Right. Okay, if we go to the next slide, that's where I'm typing those down. Okay, does, does this, do we, I mean, we can, we can iterate again on this later, but do, does this look good so far to everyone? <clears throat> or is there something major we are missing? And a great experience. The idli sambar goes there. Well, and I think you, you know, I think the objective also is like activate India. Mm. Activate India. Mm. Yeah. 
Yep. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, this hasn't really been the camps of the past, but like. Sorry. Uh, this hasn't really been in the, in the in the past, but what does it look like to engage with local civil society, not just young hackers, right? Like, what what does it look like? Uh, to connect at the state level or the national level, you know, like if we're going to be flying a bunch of people from around the world to there, are there some other discussions that we can have face to face or showcase? That's a like great compliance, idea. Robin. Compliance. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. O open question. It, it, I don't think you have to put it in objection. Okay, let's. Actually, that's a good thing to discuss right now. Any other open questions people have? Because I think it would impact the goals and objectives of the event. So any other open questions? One is engage with the local community. I just added those questions in there. Oh, all right. Builders on versus contributors too, yeah? Yeah, 100%. And I feel like um, the other question there is um, within those two subgroups also, there's like how familiar someone is to IPFS and like overall programming, like experience level, right? So our tracks have to be able to cater to either we, either we communicate this is only for X type of folks or we program for everyone who turns up. Okay. Okay, let's look at the slide again and see if we are missing anything major. Activate India philosophy of IPFS, grow the number of new developers in the ecosystem, simple and clear communication of key takeaways from IPFS thing, and then a great event experience. Okay, and I think with that, we can open to just like brainstorming on the content we should have at IPFS camp. It need not necessarily translate into a track, but yeah, let's maybe use the next slide. How much more time do we have, 15 minutes? I think we have quite a lot of time. Okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, next step, Let's read the objectives again. Add more questions if we think we have more questions. Oops. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and then let's start putting in ideas on the stickies in the next slides um, on what we think should be covered in the content we do. So it's just like dump ideas there, like small, big, not great, great. All of them. Uh, I, had, I had a bunch of different ones. Some are ones that we've already had. Like uh, we've had IPFS everywhere, but we didn't really focus on the hard and the why, and why they're hard and how to get there. So it could be that we have a new track about. Like, we kind of called it integrating IPFS. Covered some of that this time around, but um, really focusing on IO, like a track about IoT or a track about mobile or a, a, not underwater really, but you know, IPFS in space as a track. Right? Like, could be. Yeah. Uh, and then I added a, another one, this track of doing stuff with IPFS that might not, not even be technical, that might be using applications that support IPFS. So people have this experience of, oh, I made this thing, or I published this data, or like a, a group writing session where everybody publishes their, their, what they wrote on IPFS. So not necessarily coding, but actually using it, uh, IPFS as a user.
Okay. I also love the how to hold your own IPS community event. And I added like a superset track there next to that, like the train the trainer. Like how do we teach people to be better uh, speakers at events and train them how to do good uh, decks for teaching how to code or doing their thing. I think those types of things really help energize and activate a community. So that could be under the like activate India so that that community leaves with a bunch of new skills about how to continue doing that work. And a list of people who speak the native languages there, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Although you won't, uh, like developers generally speak English. So I don't think we will face any language barriers. I mean, we did Phil Bangalore last year and all the talks were in English and or the entire audience was like perfectly comfortable understanding all of it and interacting with the speakers. So, I mean, it would be fun to know and to like, and like hear some of the languages. We could throw it in as an experience, but it's not like... One, th one thing that we do get, though, is that means that the people, the people that are English comfortable did show up. But it doesn't mean that people that weren't English comfortable weren't interested and might have come. Um, so one thing that we get requests in our uh, localization platform is people request like IPFS Companion or IPFS.io or Docs.IPFS in different languages. And so it could be that we have a localization track yeah. where... Yeah. Yeah, where people, you know, group together. If we come out with a group, a working group that say are the, the leaders of a given language, they're like, hey, I'm the lead for Bengali, and we will translate the docs website or the IPFS, the Helia examples repo or things like this into a language. Sure, specs, fine. <laughs> that could be part of the train the trainers track too, right? Just one of the call outs of action. It's like if you really care and you want to learn how to run a community event and you speak one of these languages, you know, consider being a, a localization resource, right? Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that I actually care a lot about, although I don't do a lot of work on, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, there's nothing cooler than to go to an open source event somewhere in the world and realize that you're in the room and you're giving a presentation in English and there's a group huddled in the back with somebody who's translating it in real time. Like I've seen this multiple times and then they sit down and they're coding in their native language. And, and that's when you realize you're getting outside of our little bubble. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that gives me an idea. We could probably have a developer influencers track or like group. No, it's a thing. Like there are, there are college students who actually have YouTube channels with thousands and thousands of followers and people follow them and, um, I see Muhammad smiling there. Do you know one of them? <laughs> yeah, so there are, there are like uh, people who do that. That made me think about something else. Like what about accessibility, right? Um, have we been thinking about that enough? Because like maybe even more so than uh, cultural diversity. I don't think we've been thinking enough about like different barriers for people who are disabled, like ASL. Like what if we have developers who are hearing impaired how can we make sure that they can participate in, you know, the different events? Also yeah. for the show and tell talk, maybe think about um, like a maker's track, right? So that could be something that's like pushed towards creatives and also people who are tinkers or who want to show how they implement IP, IPFS in different ways. And that could be a way to include a wider range of people who are not just developers into the space. Because I don't think as far as like creatives, artists, and people who could potentially make IPFS attractive and marketable are um, a big part of the community right now. It's like core technical people who are cool to us, but may not be interesting to the wider public. Yeah. Um, so we, thinking about like just different wearables or IOT or digital art, different ways that um, IPFS could be integrated. It could be a way to get a bigger group of people um, into IPFS community. Yeah. A subset of that group is also designers. I keep hearing from teams that are like building products like we need good designers they don't come to web3 so yeah. yeah i mean even when we're talking about uh nft artists and making their own platforms like to me it would be great to have a whole talk on how could you build your own platform in ipfs deploying your smart contract on fevm being able to you know retain a large percent of your um margin your profit margins for your art um i think that would all be interesting um yeah i mean it's Hmm. It's just a lot, a lot of 
ways we can include a wider range of people. I'll put it in the next slide. Okay. Um, one track I would love to see, um, based off some of the talks I saw this year, would be IPFS and privacy, mm -hmm. um, specifically between you know Fission's work on private and permission data on IPFS and the sort of reader privacy work in the DHT. Um, I work with a lot of activist organizations at the foundation who. Uh, you know, have use cases where they care a lot about privacy and, and potentially a lot of misconceptions about how private the network actually is um, for a lot of their content. Okay. Any other ideas? This is the time where you imagine you have a magic wand and you can get whatever you want at IPFS camp next this year. <laughs> Okay, I put in a few ideas as well on the second slide there. Um, one was office hours uh, with operators, uh, basically the community that is here right now. Because I feel like talking to the community that is at IPFS thing would be a huge value add, like getting those one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, would be a huge value add for like developers uh, who are new to the ecosystem. Um, all day dosa, yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's it's illegal if we don't have that. So, <laughs> yeah, um, you, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to speak to the win bounties and internships track. So, I, um, Node.js Interactive Conference typically does like they have bugs and issues that are printed out on little paper slips that they hand out, um, and then they have like a group of SMEs, subject matter experts, walking around to help people on like interacting with development, trying to solve actual bugs. Like we have help wanted tasks out there and we point people there, but having that session interactive during the conference, I think would be really useful because a lot of people look at those issues and then are overwhelmed because it is overwhelming. It's a huge ecosystem. So I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Like plus 100 do that <laughs> cool yeah okay yeah um yeah and that's yeah i think i was trying to go for something similar when i say say i put up the digital matchmaking wall idea like just like match open problems to builders like you know imagine if there was a wall where you have all of, like you could submit a problem and then somebody could be like hey that problem problem is interesting i want to solve it who do I find to be able to like solve it together to collaborate? So yeah, I think I think both these ideas can marry and become something uh, that's very meaningful for attendees. Okay. Yeah, for the digital matchmaking wall, like a lot of a lot of times, like even at this conference, you know, we have the unconference where you know sometimes there's a little planning ahead of time, sometimes there's not, but it like is just all culminated, culminated into one single like time frame. I think it would be good to have that be persistent throughout the conference where you have that wall available at first day all the way to the last day where people can say like, this is a problem. People can maybe put on there like, I am a potential solver of this problem and I am a potential, potential you know, beneficiary of this problem. Like, so yeah. then you find all the groups trying to solve the same problem and all the people who might be able to solve that problem and then maybe provide, they provide their own contact info or like facilitate them getting in touch and actually meeting at some point. But having that available the whole time, I think yeah. could be really cool instead of just like one on unconf that then ends. Yeah. You know? I think this wall is a good social graph idea, right? Like uh, you, you could just build an event app for this just to be able to like do this. Okay. And yeah, yeah Taki. I think it could just be like a Trello board, right? A Trello board with like the different needs. Trouble board. Yeah. yeah. And then just like different needs of startups or companies in the space. And then as people want to pick up those needs, just pick up the sticky note and move it to doing. And then uh, you could like spin that up really quickly, or it could potentially even be something that's like created on IPFS. That's a reiteration of Trello. Yeah. 
troublemakers board also sounds nice, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but I think that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Any other ideas? I. Uh, one of the challenges in these events is oftentimes we're using software to do the event or to talk about the event or to talk to each other at the event that doesn't actually Work. reflect our values or use our stuff. And I wonder if there's some like focus on, on a dog fooding, like the, an outcome of, of the thing, replacing the things that we would otherwise use that aren't typing us. Like a decentralized Slack. Sure, or even like a calendaring thing, or like you just said, an event app, or you know, something like that. But just that theme, not event specifically, just for the things that we do every day. Got it. Okay, yeah. Um, so we have a lot of ideas here. I'm not going to club them live right now, but would be great if people can just like. If throughout the rest of the event you come up with like more ideas, just like dump them here. Um, um, I also want to maybe reflect on all the tracks we had last year and see if we want to redo some of them or not do some of them or do them differently this time. So maybe we just like go track by track and comment on each track. Um, so the way we'll do this is Possibly we pass around the mic for each of the tracks and then I'll just like make notes with everybody's comments on it. So the first one is keynotes. I think the objective slide. Nah, cancel. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's, there's really a lot of tracks. I'm wondering if like passing the mic around might be a pretty rough way to do this. Okay, so um, do you want to do it the slide way again? Like, yeah, that or, might that might be that might be good. And okay. actually, because I think one of the things we probably want, and I don't know if we have the right people in the room for, is the track leads. Yes. Because they'll give the kind of like the retro on on that. So it oh, no. might need to do this one async. Yeah, I think. Okay. Okay. Then that just leaves the track leads. I mean, yeah. I, I think if we have <laughs> keynotes and browsers and platforms, we're good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, some of the, I think a retro on IPFS thing yeah. would also be really good because some of these we did like computer over data and measurement performance browsers, like data transfer, content route. Um, actually, yeah, <laughs> so far everything in the screen are also tracks we had here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, then, um, so then what we'll do is we'll just look at the retro we did yesterday once more and then come back with like a recommendation for async comments. And then possibly also keep the like apply for a track option open, right? Once we announce the event. Uh, absolutely, that was, that was one of the things that I was gonna say is super important yeah. in order to meet the needs of the community of people that will be coming yeah. is creating as, as wide a possible vector for that input as early as possible. So a lot of these are kind of curated and specific to the core implementers and builders and don't really map to that larger audience. Like, I think it's fascinating that the list of track ideas that we did at the beginning is so far away from this list. <laughs> and that's, I think, something that might be interesting too from an, organi an organizer standpoint is asking the question, being really clear, what is the difference between camp and thing? And so if it, it's a very different audience and it'll have different needs. I think there's an opportunity to bring a bunch more um, other organizations that have commercial offerings, their own protocols, and a bunch of other things in here that isn't really represented necessarily, um, and and really like like we want to invite people who are using IPFS as a platform and succeeding as a platform. Again, we want to curate it, make sure it's like okay. So, what are you doing that's like actually connected to IPFS? Um, but we want to showcase that. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, some of those people, there are a couple of PLN, a few PLN companies based in India. 
I am hoping to have them as like organizers. So I'll be like reaching out to them <laughs> to help us because uh, it's going to be a lot of people. We need a lot of local support. Right. So I think that's it. Yay! And if there is anything else, please gr find me or Uni and like let us know if there's an afterthought you have at any point. Thank you. Thank you very much.